Hey everybody, welcome to GIS Chops. My name's Jeff. It's Tool Belt Tuesday again, and the tool we're going to be talking about today is the ground to grid correction. You use that tool when you're entering bearings and distances from legal descriptions or other things. It rotates and scales the line correctly to fit to the grid rather than from the ground measurements that the surveyor did. So let's go see how that works. To set your ground to grid correction, you need to go to the Edit tab, and then click this drop down arrow, and that opens up the corrections dialog. And you can set it by either entering a correction angle and a scaling distance. I usually use this enter the ground line and draw the grid line because that's easiest for me. I'm usually doing a subdivision plat and there's a basis of bearing. I enter that bearing they have on that plat and the distance between two known monuments and then I click the monuments in my map and that computes the angle and the scale factor and then enters them into those boxes rather than me having to do math. So I like that method. You can also come down here to the to this little button that does the same thing. It's it's always available regardless of which uh, which tab you have open. So there I have the map tab and it's still available here and I can get to the same dialog as the big button on the edit tool. So I have a subdivision and I've used it in a few other videos that I've made but this subdivision has a basis of bearing between these two two section monuments and I have tie sheets for those section monuments which means a surveyor has gone out collected coordinates for those monuments and published those to the county courthouse and so they're they're really good coordinates using GPS so I'm going to take that basis of bearing and enter it into this dialogue using the enter the ground line and draw the grid line method my bearing is 0 degrees 39 minutes 6 seconds in the northeast quadrant and you see that it's quadrant bearing there in the drop down. I can change that to be any one of the others, polar, south azimuth, or north azimuth. But I like quadrant bearing because that's what they're always expressed in. Then I enter the distance, which is 261.97 feet. Now I hit next, and this is where I draw the line. So I start in the south because my bearing was northeast. So I'm going to start with the southern point and then click on the northern point. And then it turned the ground to grid correction on. And if we hit that drop down, you see it's rotating it by a fraction of a degree and by a, and scaling it down so that it's less than a foot. So that's how you turn on the ground grid correction. And we can test it out by adding a line with that same bearing using the dynamic constraints tool. And I just did a video about that tool. If you want to see that, look at the card up above and, and click on play next. And you can watch that video. So I hit tab, then I'm going to enter my 0.3906-1. I could enter just 0.3906-1. And that gets me the same bearing. Now if I hit enter, it gives me the right bearing. Then 2,661.97 feet. And it should drop it right on top of my point. So if I turn off my point, the line is right there where it should be. If I turn off ground to grid, select that line and delete it. and enter that line again now if we zoom in you can see it's longer and off a little to the left so the line is longer and off to the left so that's how you set up ground to grid correction. Let me know if you have any questions about that in the comments. Give this video a like if it helped you out. Subscribe to the channel. Share it with your colleagues.
you want to see my other tool belt Tuesday videos, they're over here. My latest videos up there. My subscribe button's up there. Remember to be nice out there. Be super nice this week. We'll see you next time.